I don't look at my disability as good or bad or indifferent. It just is. So I don't spend any time thinking about what I could have accomplished had I not had that accident. I'm interested in what's going on right now. This is the body I have to dance in. So if I want to dance, I have to dance in this body at this time. don't know what's going to happen tomorrow because tomorrow hasn't happened yet. My accident taught me that you don't know what is around the corner. I mean, that day when I left my, my apartment to go to work that day, it was a, a day like any other day until it wasn't anymore. You know? And two seconds and one piece of ice and my whole world changed. So you just really don't know what life has in store for you. Dancing when I was a child, it was, it was like a fairy tale to me. It was a different reality. I had a difficult childhood. I came from a pretty dysfunctional family, and so when I was dancing, I was never afraid. I could be a princess. I could be Sleeping Beauty. I could be myself. As I got older and my accident happened and other things in my life, I lost a child. The ritual and the discipline of dancing helped me to heal and to recover my center and to know who I was. I'm always a dancer no matter what happens. That stays constant. There's a lot of discipline that goes in to this that perhaps you're not accustomed to because it seemed fairly lax when I saw. But this is going to be more like any regular dance class that you go to. So if you want to do a showing before the end of the school year, you have to be here. It's very frustrating for me to knock myself out, to come and try to make sure that you have a chair and Michelle has a chair and that the wheels are pumped up and all of that. Where else do you think you're going to get that? Nowhere. So. All I can do is offer it, and you come, and you take what you can from it. Because I already know how to do this. See, I've been dancing for 57 years. Do the stretch. 
When I started dancing in my wheelchair after my accident, there was no one to help me. I had to do it all on my own. So I wanted it to be an easier way for them to realize their full potential. That just because you have a disability doesn't mean you can't dance. So many people, they only see the apparatus and they call us wheelchair bound. And you know, that sounds like I'm tied into my chair against my will. You know, I'm not bound, I'm unbound. Years ago when I was a young student at the Washington Ballet, the great Agnes DeMille came as a guest artist. Now Miss DeMille, she had a full figure. She had bosoms and she had hips and a nice round bum. And it was considered that Miss DeMille didn't have the right body type. I, I was small, I was short, and I wanted to be taller. So I fantasized about having a bone transplant in my legs. And one day I asked Miss DeMille if she thought it was a good idea that I should get this bone transplant in my legs. And she took my face in her hands and she said, Kitty dear, you have to learn to dance in the body you have. And that's what I teach all the other people with disabilities that I teach. If, you, if your body is your instrument, and you are, you are at war with your instrument, you will never make anything beautiful. You have to find peace with your instrument. And you want to keep your head right on your neck. Not out here, not drop, looking okay. down at the floor, but so on, your, on your spine. Just a good yeah. work tonight. It looks beautiful. It looks really beautiful. And, and you feel comfortable in that chair? Yeah. Yeah, and it looks great on you. Yay! <laughs> okay. Non-disabled people feel that the big tragedy of my life was my accident, and that's not true. The great tragedy of my life will be many years from now when I pass away, and there's a student sitting at the bottom of the set of stairs wanting to go up and dance, and there's no way for them to get there and no one to teach them. That will be the big tragedy of my life. Thank you.